the grandparents are going to be home soon. They're going to take the ugly dog back. No! Did <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> oh my god, my sister heard you. <laughs> That's how loud you were through my headphones. Hi, big bees. Why? Why was the ending? Why did? Why? Just why? Because he hates us personally. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're so right. <laughs> Bunkies. Don't you love when you scare your cat by just walking? Yeah. She's okay. I can, I can. <gasps> ben, oh my god. There's so many dogs. And they're not kissing me. What the hell? I have zero dog and I'm getting no kisses. Not even from my teddy cat. Okay. Um. Hello, welcome to a Fish and Flower podcast. I'm Flower, aka Rose. I have two fun facts for you. Um, one of them you already know, and that's why I'm giving two. Um, the first one is that I've officially listened to all the Sleep Token instrumentals. My favorite, is, my favorite is Sugar. That's the one I'm most likely to listen to again. Um, I did look up the you lyrics after you told me that. So, oh. yep, I looked them up, and I was like. That was my fourteenth most streamed song of this year. Do what you will with that information. Um, and then <laughs> silence. Yeah. Um. The other fun fact is that uh, Ivy has been doing this thing where if she sees you coming and she's awake or half asleep or something, she'll reach her paw out for you. So it's not fair. That's not fair. This is not. An IV dog in my room, in my bed. Well, she's not in my room or my bed anymore either, so it's fine. Before I introduce myself, I would like everyone to know we changed the way we record a little bit. And uh, since I'm not logged in because I'm recording on my other phone, fun fact, I got Oh, that's probably phone. why the audio was crap. Okay. Oh! <laughs> It's the new one. <laughs> ah! I got to put in a random name. And I just want everyone to know that it's Ivy Lover, Heart Hand, Heart Hand, as in four, as in Vessel Four, as in Guitarist with Sweet Token, as in My Beloved, as in all I, the only thing that's going on in my head is from when they played Bore the other night and take me back to Even for the first time. I'm fine. I'm so normal. Are you sure about that? Yes. Do your intro, bestie. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Fish. I don't know if you gathered that. Uh, AKA Stingray. Still Fish. Um, and my fun fact of the day is uh, I finally made a new dog suit again. Also, I I pretend love a random a group of random uh, British men. Uh, do you do you um cry over a random British man comparing himself to cold cuts, or are you normal? I'm normal <laughs> in this instance. What the fuck? <laughs> no, no, because the lyric is um room feels like a meat. Freezer, I dangle in like cold cuts. Good times. I Why do like, he like wrapping this? <laughs> I I would feel like to take this moment to remind you that Hearthstone Volume Five came out today as as of recording. Hush, it's not in my hands, so hush. Okay. What well, What would you do if I read it before you? Off myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'll stop. I am all then. Um. <laughs> Are you done How would you even it? read it before me? Genuine um, question. On her website, obviously. Oh my um, god, you're right, you're right. Yeah, that's how I've read the first for the first time. I'm stupid. I forget that it exists half the time. Because I, yeah. I just want to be surprised. Uh, okay, are you done with your intro? <laughs> sure. Um... This is very much a stream of consciousness podcast, very similar to how we talk to each other on a daily basis. Um, on today's episode, Orbiting Jupiter, I want to start with going off on why I picked this book, okay? 
so my sister did the math for me because she had to read it for school. Um, she figured it out. She went into like her purchases on Amazon to figure out when she bought, figure out when she had to read it. It was like the summer before before ninth grade. Um, she was like fourteen, which is wild. I know the teacher who this was for. It would not surprise me if the teacher did not read the book beforehand, just saw that it had middle schoolers in it, and was like, oh, these kids will relate to it. Because, in my opinion, no one under the age of 16 should read this. <laughs> I don't think anyone should read this only solely based on the emotional damage aspect. True. Um, so because why did he do that? I don't know. Literally, I picked this up, like, two years ago, because it's, like, she physically owns it. It's on our bookshelves. So I picked it up because she was like, yeah, I remember really liking this. So I picked it up and I read like five pages and then put it back down and never picked it up again and never thought of it until. Also, why, why did you make this a buddy read? Why did you suggest I, it? Why did you say, I, I'm yeah, coming let's to that point. I'm coming to that point, Misty. Um, so when I was picking all our buddy reads for this year, I think in January, um, yeah. I, most part went through the fishes tbr to uh figure out what books we should read um i tried to find ones that were on both our tbrs you know uh things like that and i was trying to find ones that gave cold vibes and i saw orbiting jupiter there i went hey it has snow on the cover and i physically own it and i remember it's kind of short and that the page or the text size is giant it's fucking giant so like it'll be a fast read um, so, like, that's why I chose it. Because it has snow on the cover. And it does have, it, it, it's, it's, all, it's winter throughout the whole damn thing, basically. So, I guess that checks out. It does check out. Um, and it is very similar to what a New England, uh, winter is like, especially in Maine. Because this takes place in Maine. I wouldn't um, know. I would. Uh, I spent the first seven years of my life in Maine. I would know. Um, so... You know, that's why I picked it. And now I would like to apologize to both of us for the emotional damage this book has caused us. I don't know if I can forgive you. I don't know if I can forgive me either. For those who do not know, I I don't know who, I mean, if you looked at my review on Goodreads, you would know. Um, I was literally crying. Like, I, I rarely cry. I rarely cry about books. Um, so, like, it's Listen, here's the thing. The things that I cry about in books are usually grief-related things. I feel like I remember you saying something about grief, and I went, oh, it's going to destroy me then? I don't know if that's actually true, but I feel like that's the thing you told me. I don't know. But I, I was don't laying- remember. I blacked it all out. I was, like, half laying in bed, and, like, my hair's kind of long, so it kind of hangs over my chest a little bit when I'm half laying in bed. And I'm reading this book, right? And I had just taken a shower, like, three hours before. My hair was just dry. Like, my hair was clean. I was having a good time. I was reading this book. And then the thing happens. And I'm just sobbing into my hair. And how dare he do that? I just washed it and everything. Uh, I would just like to say, Gary D. Smith, where in your walls? True. The fact that this man lives in, like, Idaho or something like that. One of those weird states. Potato land? Farm. He lives in one of those weird states on a farm. Yeah. One of those weird states. You know, one of those large flat states where there's nothing but farms. <laughs> Which makes sense for, because like a lot of this book is farm stuff. There's a lot of stuff with like milking cows and horses. I think that's uh, why it's so well done because he yeah. actually knows that so well. Yeah. Assumedly. Also, like, look up a picture of him at some point, and, like, you will not expect him to look like that. Um, I don't know why he takes place in Maine, though. Michigan, that's where he lives. Let me see this off. Also, he has six children, and that always makes me go, what, every time I see that? He looks like just a dude. Like, he just looks like a guy. I know! <laughs> the, one, the one where he, 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 he's, like, in a white shirt with a tie, and he just has his arm crossed! Yeah, yeah. He's yep. just a dude! He's, he's just, just a guy. He's just a guy, and he fucking did this to us. That bitch. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, but I think he's kind of real. True. Um, the moral of the story at the end of this is that we both cried. We both loved it. We both rated it five stars. Um, I love how I accidentally picked a character-based book, and I was like, once I was like maybe fifty pages into it, I was like, well, this was at least a good pick for the fish. Like, I 
bitch had already read it and rated it five stars and was crying. Um, and I was like, okay, well, like, listen, at least I'm I thought I was going to be physically ill. I was like, okay, it will probably be like a four star for me because normally I don't like character based books as much. Um, but like, it's good. I like it. The writing's good. It's fast paced. I do really like it. I like the writing. Um, and whatnot. And then that fucking ending. Yeah. One might say it threw me off a bridge. Oh my god. (laughs) Please end it. Why would you say that? (laughs) Um, uh, So, um, content warnings. We have a child death. Death. Car accident. I knew a car accident was gonna happen because of that. LOL. Um... Child abuse, pregnancy, physical abuse, animal death, drug use. And also, one I'm going to add, but only three people, I saw only three people had tagged as this. Now four, because I did as well. Um, sexual assault slash rape. Nothing is blatantly said, but is heavily hinted at. To the point where it's very obvious. Um, as like, an, like, if I read this around the time that my sister read it, I don't think I would have gotten it from the context. But, like, me as an adult nowadays, like, recognizing the way that he's acting and uh, the way that certain sentences are broken off and um, the way he doesn't like people touching him or people walking behind him or people behind him at all and all this stuff. I'm like, oh. Like, I just, okay. like, don't speak to me because, like, why? Just, he did not deserve that. Like, I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> That's the moral of the story. Just cries. Um, Can we talk about the cover for a second? The cover is him walking on the side of the road, isn't it? But yeah, yeah but it's like tilted in a way, and I feel like I don't know. I just it's like yeah. on an angle, you know. And I just feel like it. I could just imagine it being like, you know, how like in, in a lot of the times in scary movies, it's like they do the whole circly thing to like mm-hmm. zoom in on a shot. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it has that vibe in a good way, and I just there's just something about the cover that just makes so much sense. It's so good. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk about this book now. Um, there, are, it is very short. It's under 200 pages, and the text size is giant, right? Um, I say that it gives me when you probably won't recognize this, but um, when you have to write a paper for school, uh, but you don't know how to spend three pages Say. talking about. Uh, like one poem. So I've written a paper before, Bestie. I okay. understand what you're saying, but I've written a paper before. Okay. Um. So like, well, I don't know what your school is like. So like, you were supposed to write it in twelve size font, but you're like, I don't know how to write five pages about a ten line poem. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Um. And so then you like try to slightly increase the font size. Imagine that, but like, when it's super obvious, <laughs> like, you know. Um, so, like, it's a fast read, and whatnot, but there's a lot of shit going on. Um. I feel like so, it wasn't that fast for me, only because I had to pause a lot, I feel like. Now, here's the other thing. I am not good at remembering names. I literally remember Jack and jo- Joseph and Jupiter. Everyone else, I am going to call them by their jobs or relations to other people, right? Because I don't think I can pronounce them. Yeah, I, I've blocked, I've walked out this entire book okay well i'm about to bring it back to you have fun um so the book uh so the book starts with a woman from social services talking to jack's parents um jack is in sixth grade i believe uh about his kid and uh she is looking at jack and they're like listen jack lives here too he should know what we're getting him into and whatnot so he should hear this um and so she talks about this kid joseph who's going to be living with them as a foster kid right um and how he doesn't like people touching him, walking behind him, peaches, canned peaches, um, a bunch of other things. I don't um, understand why he doesn't like peaches. What is that? It's not explained, but um, yeah. Uh, I assume it has something to do with uh, the food they ate at Stone Mountain. I mean, I figured that like maybe he was forced to eat them because I'm so traumatized by food. I was forced to eat, so I get it. Yeah. Um. So like. Uh, also, I would like you know, everything that is mentioned in this book comes back in some way, and every time it's heartbreaking. Um, and I hate this man for it. He's so good at doing that. Is there something more than heartbreaking? Because, like, whatever it is, it, I, like, oh my god. Yeah. 
Um, so, uh, basically, there was, like, he was at, like, a halfway house type place, right? Um, juvenile halfway house type thing, uh, where some kids gave him some drugs of some kind. He took them, uh, and he freaked out. I'd almost killed a teacher, almost choking her to death. And so because of that, they sent him to a place called Stone Mountain. It's never described what Stone Mountain is, but it's basically, um, I assume, some type of uh, juvenile facility for, like, people who have done bad things. Um, and and they're, they're um, in the system and whatnot. And they're dangerous. Is, what kind of drug did he take? It's like, never I... described, but I do understand. I have... I believe I understand why he did the things that he did while he was on the drugs. And I'll get to that when he explains it, because, like, um, and whatnot. I know, but, I know some drugs do make you excessively angry, etc. Well, here's the thing. The, the, the thing, in when he takes the drugs, he is also currently having a panic attack. And there's a very good... And the, there's a very good chance what they gave him was an upper... So with a panic attack and an upper at the same time, mm-hmm. and he took two of them, and he's never taken them before. Yeah. Um, All but, I have to say before we continue is everybody failed this kid. I mean, honestly. besides the parents, they did their best, but everybody else, fuck you. <laughs> There's like two and a half teachers. Who do a good job. The parents and the teachers. Everyone else. I say half a teacher because Wanda uh, is not. Until at one point where she's like, oh, you like to read? Well, now I like you. Um, Honestly, valid, I guess. A little bit. Two percent. But basically, uh, he went to this place called Stone Mountain um, and whatnot. He tried to escape. And also, he is 14 and has a daughter. I feel like we should mention that when he tried to escape, he, like, cut up his entire side. That's not until later, Misty. That information doesn't come for a while. Oh, my God. Fine. I see how it is. (laughs) Let me rule. I'm ruling here. This is the one place I have power. Give me control. Um, I'm fake punching my iPad right now. Um, uh... So, yeah, that's I was happening. like, what if I want to be in control for once, but then January's gonna happen? <laughs> um, so I'm gonna backseat drive that whole entire time, and I'm so excited. Um, I feel like it's not gonna go out only because you can't pull one liner after one liner. I can in my notes, though. <laughs> you haven't seen my notes. The way I write notes is wild. You're gonna have a fun time, trust me. Um, so. Basically, uh, Joseph arrives. Uh, he gets the top Just letting bunk. letting you know. Uh, okay. Joseph and Jack uh, share a room. Joseph gets the top bunk. Uh, he starts going to school with Jack. They uh, He instantly starts helping out with milking and whatnot, and he doesn't understand uh, how it works or anything. So, like, Jack's dad helps him figure it out. There's, like, one moment where, like, Jack's father has this thing where like to comfort someone he puts his hand on their back and so um he goes to do something like that and joseph freaks out uh and he's like oh sorry i'll try to remember um but I feel like him, I uh, that for some reason my wi-fi went out so it's a good thing that i, I decided to record it on my other phone <laughs> don't you love cellular data yes um i don't know i don't have it um so I live in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's this one cow named Rosie uh, that he really loves because, like, when he pet her on the backside, she uh, gets really happy. And uh, he, there's like this whole Real. thing where Jack thinks that Joseph likes it because the first time someone's like, or something has showed him affection, and he believes it. Um, there's also this thing that whenever Joseph smiles, he counts it, and Jack keeps counting. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just. Okay. There's a, just another little detail that comes into later. Um, Joseph keeps on calling Jack, Jackie. And every time he goes, Jackie, and then Jack goes, Jack, and then he says, yeah. And it happens every time. The first day of Joseph joining him to school, uh, they wait for the bus stop, and the bus driver instantly goes, hey, 
you don't look like something about how like he doesn't look old enough to have a kid or uh stone mountain or something like that um and joseph instantly just turns around and leaves and goes to walk to school it's the middle of winter um so like it's below freezing right um and the bus driver's like uh you dumbass you idiot why would you do that um jack instantly gets off and follows him and continues to go with him um one i don't know how every adult in this state in this county knows about his past because technically he is a minor it should be under wraps like there's no way anyone should well, know this it's, i imagine uh, part of it was told to obviously like the principal and the teachers and then obviously it's a small town to be spread it around yeah but that's like kind of illegal um <laughs> do you know so how like literally illegal thing for no damn reason it's i know i live in one um but, like, that means he's, like, being heavily bullied for things that are out of his control. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, Jack follows him. Uh, they walk to school together. Um, and it's, like, a thing where every morning they do that, uh, and there's these kids on the bus who, like, seem to be kind of friendly with Jack. Uh, but every time they, like, call, literally, it's described as them calling Jack a jerk for walking to school. By being nice to a guy? Be so serious. I know. I know. Um, right? Um, there's, like, a whole thing where, uh, a lot of the classes that Joseph has are the same classes as Jack, despite the fact that they are two years apart, because, um, the, I think it's the English teacher, like, the eighth grade English teacher won't teach him. So he has to be in sixth grade English. I'm sorry, no, that's not how it works. It does not matter what this child does. You still have to You know, them. I don't understand why everyone's so scared of him. Why could he do wrong? Well, it's because he almost strangled a teacher to death. So uh, now everyone's scared of him. About that. <laughs> yeah. Um that's why he was at Stone Mountain. Um, so like because that he, they have a lot of the same classes, um and whatnot. Uh there is a thing where he has a picture of... I feel like a very important question is what uh-huh. is Joseph's race? Because it's not explicitly said. I know. it. I assume white because it's New England. Small town New England. So that's what I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. But I do not know. Um... Like, sometimes uh, it has not, he has non-white vibes, and sometimes he has white vibes, so I don't know what's going on. And I feel I, like that would be different so it's like, like, this stuff a lot. Yeah. Um, one night, while they're, like, laying in bed, Jack asks him what his daughter's name, in, name is, and he says Jupiter, because it was their favorite planet. Um, so, ah! yep. He has a picture of Jupiter in his wallet, so, like, sometimes in class when he's bored, he will pull it out, especially English class. There's, like, this whole thing where he sees a book that Jack has, uh, that Jack's, like, it's a really difficult book to read, so he picks it up, um, and he reads it multiple times. <laughs> um, so and real. so, <laughs> um, and, like, English class, so he'll get, like, bored, because he clearly is higher level than what's going on in this class, so he will just pull out his picture of Jupiter and stare at her, and so the teacher one day comes up to him, and he's like, give me your picture, give me whatever you have, pay attention to me, and he's just silently, he never talks, rarely ever talks, just puts it in his wallet and puts it back oh, yeah. in his back pocket, and she just, um, gets kind of scared and just walks away, um, and whatnot. Um, the two teachers at like, this I point- I know it's common for guys yeah. to just carry a wallet, but I, it's like, the idea of, like, a 14-year-old just carrying a fucking wand is kind of funny. Uh, the uh, only two teachers who are kind of nice to him are uh, the math teacher, who isn't even his math teacher, right? Uh, but he, like, notices that he's good at math, so, like, there's also this thing where they have, fifth peri- they have fifth period... They have fifth period... Office dude together where they like, have to take notes and whatnot uh, with the vice principal. I'll bring up the vice principal in a minute. Um, but he uh, notices that Joseph's really good at math, so he randomly brings math equations to Joseph. Joseph will solve them almost in, like by the end of the period. Um, and he's like, "Wow, you're so good. Maybe by the end I'll give you trigonometry." Cough, cough. He does. Um, and then the other one is the PE teacher. Um, apparently Joseph is very athletic. He can do basically anything. Um, 
And the PE teacher, like, literally uh, got, does a competition where they do, like, the rope climb thing. Uh, and the gym teacher, like, also, loses to him. Also, the gym teacher doesn't have legs. I was going to bring that up. The gym teacher, like, loses uh, the first time by, like, a few seconds. And there's, like, this whole thing where, like, they do it legless because the gym teacher doesn't have legs due to, I think, a bomb um, in Vietnam. So that's just a thing. But the way it, my brain was just like, LOL. Um, so, uh, yeah, there is the vice principal. Um, the first day, because they walked, uh, because the way that the bus driver was, they are technically late, and the principal, vice principal, is like, how dare you be late, uh, Jack, you have always been a good kid, but now, as soon as you start hanging out with this bad kid, now you're suddenly in trouble, blah, 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 never be late again, blah, 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 um, and pulls Joseph aside, um, tries to grab onto him and just was like uh and so he like pulls him aside he's like okay here's your class schedule because now you have responsibilities um the way that jack describes joseph or not joseph describes vice principal the first time is a guy who feels like he wanted to be a drill sergeant but couldn't make it so instead is a vice principal i feel like everyone feels what that feels like (laughs) like that's just a universal understanding we all know that We've all had that one teacher or vice principal or person in power, the right? The question is, what is Lissy's adult that just feel like they have to ruin or, like, negatively impact kids', kids lives to feel good about themselves? What yeah. is that phenomenon? Um, so, yeah. Uh, very quickly, this vice principal notices that the math teacher is during their office duty stuff uh when they have like nothing to do is giving joseph math equations so yells at the math teacher and then makes it so they constantly have to take notes despite the fact that there's no reason to take notes and all the stuff why um, are you bad that children are learning at school i know right um and then uh so one day walking to school um Joseph decides he wants to, like, pretend to go ice skating on the river. Uh, except the issue is that until it gets, like, very, 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 very cold, it's not, uh, thick enough. The ice isn't because the river is constantly flowing, right? Makes sense. That's a common thing. That's a common thing in New England, okay? Um, he does not know this. There's this whole thing where, uh, Jack, uh, remembers the time when he was walking with his mother and, uh, there was a yellow lab on the river and it fell through and died. Um, I was not okay. That was chapter two. What the fuck? Yeah, I uh, forgot about that, or else I would have warned you. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, I didn't even have I a dog you. in the bed, so I couldn't cuddle my dog to feel better. Like, how dare you? I'm sorry. I love you. Um, so, uh, almost immediately, like, Joseph is, like, sliding on the ice, like, he's ice skating type thing. Um, and Jack is freaking out. Because he does, right, he knows yeah. what's gonna happen. So he screams, uh, Maddie, 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 which is the name of Jupiter's mother, right? Um, and he instantly stops. He knows this name because, uh, Joseph screams it in his sleep, right? Like, I can't, like, yep. Amongst other things that it heavily also hints at the essay stuff. Um, so, uh, he, uh, stops, but then he falls through the middle. Um, there's, like, also a thing where a guy who's driving by sees them, and, uh, Joseph is, like, he's, like, hey, kids, get off the ice, you dumbasses, and so Joseph starts dropping up and down in the middle of the ice, and so the guy just drops off, um, and Joseph falls through, almost immediately afterwards, and so Jack has to save him, um, and falls through as well, and almost drowns as well, in the process, right, but saves him, uh, and then as soon as they get out and whatnot, um, the vice principal drives up and takes him back to Jack's house and it's all like, hey, this guy called the school and it was like, hey, there's some kids on the ice, you're lucky, he called um, and all this stuff uh, you're gonna get a stern talking to in fifth period, basically say you just almost drowned to death and now probably have hypothermia, but guess what, you still have to come to class, bitches um, <laughs> I feel like that's not a good reason to miss school hear me out um, yeah. so- so um yeah that's a good time and he's also like staring at jack being like see i told you he's bad news all this stuff uh there's also like things with like kids on the bus uh or no the kids on the bus stuff happens after this so um what happens after that 
is uh Jack's mom and Sue like make some strips so they can like put on clean clothes, uh make some hot chocolate, um all the stuff. Uh and then Jack's dad comes home and is all like, Hey, ya idiots, um talks down to Jack being all like, Hey, what were you thinking? All this stuff. Uh and then sends Jack to do some stuff so he can't hear him uh say what he says Joseph and whatnot. Um and it's official rule after that day that they have to take the bus no matter what. Um, so they take the bus. Uh, Joseph automatically sits in the back of the bus, right, um, reading his book. And then some of the kids who are like kind of Jack's friends who were calling him a jerk because he was walking with a guy that was being bullied. I don't bullied. think they're really friends. I don't know. Um, like push him around and then force like him that. to sit. Yeah, for- force him to sit down with them. And then they're like, hey, you should stop hanging around Joseph. He's bad news. You know those three eighth graders who are bullies? Well, they are planning to beat up and kill Joseph because the other day um, in like gym class or something, or maybe it was in the changing room, something like that. One of them was bringing up Maddie or Madeline. Um, that's her full name. Also, that's like a thing after the whole icing. Uh, Joseph's like, don't call her Maddie. Only I can call her Maddie. Um, her name's Madeline. Um, so, so someone was talking shit about Madeline and he then um, strangled him to death valid why would you talk about his dead girlfriend and mother of his child you dumbass that oh i'm pissed just... i'm even more pissed now because i was looking at my wall as you do kiki ripped my taylor swift poster no you know the blue one where she has a daisy by her eye yeah yeah so she like jumps up on my radio you know and she paws at all the shit on my walls Um, so, uh, yeah, that happened. So, like, these eighth graders are playing to beat him up. And Jack's like, okay, um, and then sits with Joseph. (laughs) Um, so, yeah, at that point, the PE teacher understands this is what's happening. So, every day at gym class, he makes sure while Joseph is off changing, uh, and is alone in the changing room, uh, right? Or in the locker room or whatever. He makes sure these three bullies clean up the mats every time so they can't beat him up. <laughs> we love this gym teacher. <laughs> He's trying to solve this. Um, one day uh, while they are basically sitting around, I think it's around the time that the falling through the ice happens and whatnot. Um, maybe it's then? I don't know. Uh, the vice principal is like yelling at them and whatnot. Uh, and Basically, uh, Joseph is reading another book, uh, another, maybe it's the same book that is very difficult to read, and the language arts teacher comes up and sees that he's reading it, um, and so she's all like, hey, have you read this book? And he's like, no, and she's like, hey, blah, blah. um, and so they start talking, and then sees I this whole thing. Like, the implication that, quote-unquote, bad kids usually don't do that, and so when bad kids do something like that it's like oh my god it's like quote all bad kids are stupid you know that sort of mm-hmm, thing mm-hmm. yeah yeah um uh so uh vice principal guy uh goes to pull joseph away for like reading and joseph instantly like drops all the stuff backs away into a corner puts his hands up uh looks down all the stuff and jack is like instantly in the middle like hey 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 don't touch him please like he'll just follow you if you need him to go somewhere and hands back bag back to joseph and everything um and no one says anything hear me out i don't think a vice principal should be grabbing forcefully onto any kid's arm no matter the circumstances so you know um but then the language arts teacher i feel like they were also told that joseph doesn't like to be touched and it just everything the vice principal does feels very malicious yep um so uh the uh like, our teacher takes him to the library to, sh- like, show him books that he likes and whatnot, the end. Uh, and that's the half-teacher who is nice to him. Um, now, there's also this whole thing where Joseph's father is calling at the house trying to talk to Joseph. And they're all like, no, no, not... Yeah, they're like, no, you don't have any rights to, like, blah, blah, blah. He literally, at one point, shows up, so, like, uh, Jack's mother makes it so Joseph, uh, goes to therapy. Valid! <laughs> Yeah. valid um we love this because this was written like 10 years ago okay so like a 14 year old guy going to therapy 
hell Thank yeah. God. I know, right? Um, so like when he's at a therapy appointment, uh, so Jack is by himself in the barn milking the cows, and Joseph's father just comes in and he's all like, Hey, who are you? Where's my son? All this stuff. Um, and he's all like, I don't he's not here. Um, and then Jack's dad comes in and he's like, Hey, you're not supposed to be here, all this stuff. Um my question you know, is where did he court get their address? Uh, that too. How did he get their address? But also I'm pretty sure when your child is forcefully removed from your house for physical abuse uh, and put into a foster care, uh, one, you don't get their address, and two, you are court-mandated, not allowed to see that child unless if there is someone from the state there. There is not at this moment in time. There is, in fact, a whole thing where there's, like, a whole plot line where he has to get a lawyer in order to be able to get his own ch- to see his own child, and he's angry about this, Right. Um, like, who did he threaten to get this information? What did he do? I know, right? Um, so, uh, he's all, like, threatening, uh, Jack's dad, all, like, he's also, like, what the fuck did you do, kid, to Jack, Bay? like, what did you do to be here? And he's, like, nothing? Uh, because he's, like, his biological son, right? But he just assumes he's another shitty kid, uh, who is forced in foster care and is now being forced to work on a farm. And he's, like, now you're making my kid do what he's working on a farm. How the fuck dare you? This is my kid. I have rights. And he's, like, you may have rights, but, like, you can't be here. I'm sorry. This is not my fault. Like, I don't know what you expect me to do about it. Um, He's very nice to this guy, even when he threatens Jack. Uh, and whatnot. He's, like, very calmly, like, please get out of my house. Get off my property. You know. um, All this stuff. Um, And that's, like, a whole thing. Uh, There's, so, eventually, at one point, um, they do some ice skating. Uh, they set up this whole thing so they can go ice skating after one of Joseph's therapy appointments. It's really nice. And then afterwards, Joseph tells them uh, the story of his past with uh, Jupiter's mother. Basically, um, his dad was hired as a plumber there, uh, and he was forced to like, carry the tools around, uh, and he met Madeline and really liked her. Uh, so like every day, he would walk seven miles to their house, no matter the weather, to hang out with her. Can we talk about how sweet this is, though? Yeah. Um, the reason why he likes ice skating because she loved ice skating. They would, uh, there's like this whole if thing. If he where... wanted to, he would, besties. Yep. Um, he, uh, one point talks about how the first one time they danced, um, it was snowing and she closed her eyes, but he kept <laughs> his eyes open because he didn't want to stop seeing how beautiful she was. It's just heartbreaking. Um, I when... like, like, I know. Why right? did he write this book? I know, right? Um, he one day points out Jupiter to her and he's like, it's my favorite planet. And she's like, well, it's mine too now. Uh, the way she names Jupiter, Jupiter, with this knowledge, f- f- fuck me, I guess. Um, right? Um, I'm glad this, she got the name Jupiter, though. Because what happened. So, uh, that, all that stuff happens. Um, that, basically, she's sent to a private school away, but every time she comes back home, uh, he walks to her house uh, for vacations, he walks to her house and hangs out with her. Um, no matter the weather, uh, there's like this whole thing where like she's like, you shouldn't do that and whatnot. You'll freeze death. Also, uh, it's very clear that he's being abused by his father because he is hanging out with her um, even more and uh, all this stuff. Right. Um, one day, the maid comes home to see that she uh, is hanging out by herself with Joseph. Um, and whatnot and she's like i'm not gonna get fired for this blah blah blah. so tells the parents and then she gets fired um and my question is why are these bitches surprised when they neglect their child and i don't then get mad that their child is hanging out with another child because they're being neglected i don't know um so then they'd send uh her to another school far away uh he doesn't know where all this stuff um and whatnot. Uh, and then around that point, uh, social services finally start showing up to uh, his dad's house uh, and have to do weekly visits. And they're like, hey, we're taking your kid away. Right? Um, so he is at a big home of some kind. Right? Um, in the foster system. And that's when the social services lady that we see, uh, the one that we see, it comes up to him and is all like, hey, so... You're a dad. 
I think around the time when they take him away, he learns that she was pregnant. Um, and he's all like, uh, shit. And they're like, listen, a 14 year old having a kid. I think it was like right before he turned 14, uh, when she was pregnant. So mm-hmm. they're like, hey, that's not right. We gotta take you away. Um, so they're like, can hey. we pause for a moment? Uh-huh. Because I'm pretty sure they were like caught like after all of that went down, you know? Uh huh. And then. The way that we acted, like, it was the worst thing to ever happen, ever. Like, they're children. They're, like, they're basically teenagers. They are teenagers. Technically, yes. What do you oh. think is going to happen? Yeah, no, because she's 13. Because left alone and neglected. I know, right? Um, so one day, the, um... The way that we acted him, it's like... I know, right? Um, so the social services lady comes and visits him, and it's all like, hey, so she gave birth, and your dad won't sign away rights of the child, so you have to, and whatnot, because the parents just want to move on. And he's like, oh, what? And that's when she just lets it slip that Madeline died. Uh, it's never explained why. I assume in childbirth, but I do not know. And she named her daughter. Well, the question is, how would she name her Jupiter if she didn't die? True. If she died in childbirth. Because I do not know. know. I- I feel like her parents wouldn't have respected her wishes. Like, hey, I want to name True. her Jupiter. True. Um, so, it. yeah. Um, she names her Jupiter. She dies somehow. Um, and so uh, her parents are trying to give up the baby for adoption, right? But his dad won't let them. And so because yes, technically his dad is his legal guardian, despite the fact that he's now a guard, like he is a child of the state, not his father anymore. Um, so that's kind of questionable. Uh, but technically, he is the biological father of the child, so he has to sign the paperwork. So he freaks out. He's all like, I want to see my child. It is my child. And she's like, You're still technically your child. And he's like, Yeah, but it's my child. Um, so she gives him a photo. The that's how he... is, mm-hmm. is it like, what is the difference between them having a child that and then like being like 16? Like, I understand the age of consent and stuff like that probably played a factor, but I don't understand what's happening here. Um, uh, I assume what is happening here is that um, basically uh, because Madeline died, uh, the parents just have automatic rights of the child and whatnot. And like technically he has to sign away rights, but because he's under the age of 16, they basically can force him to. Okay. So, yeah. Also, the way they, when is it earlier? It's like, the way it was described is that they caught them after they had had sex, right? Mm-hmm. And the way that we acted to it was like, it's like they were implicating that he did bad things. Yeah. The way it's implicated acted. that, like, he did something to her and all this stuff um, and whatnot. Right? Um, so that's a good time. Like, you could tell they wanted to press charges on him, and I'm like, for what? Yeah, because, and it's, like, this whole thing where, because she's under the age of, I think, main, of uh, the under age of consent is 16, but, like, he's the same age as her, he's only a few months older than yeah. her, so, like, I don't, How would that work? I don't know. Um, I do not know enough about it, Maine's laws to understand what is exactly happening. Um, But that yeah, also, that part right there leads me to like the way they reacted leads me to believe that joseph is not white or at least not completely white yeah so why would he react like that yeah like it's the rich white parents who are like this is our precious daughter and you destroyed her you ruined her blah 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 type vibe going on yeah Mm -hmm. um and then this dirty poor child touched our daughter oh no yeah that's the vibe going on um so, uh, he, when she, he learns that Madeline is dead, he immediately freaks out, uh, signs oh, yeah. the paperwork. That's how he gets the photo. She gives him the photo of Jupiter. That's how he gets the photo of Jupiter. Um, right after she is born. Uh, so yeah, she survived childbirth because she's in the photo. Um, <laughs> and whatnot. Um, so, uh, he then goes and starts having a panic attack in the bathroom. Uh, and then some other kids come in and they're like, hey, you look like you're having a hard time. Take these pills. And then he downs them both instantly. And then continues to have a panic attack in this bathroom stall. A teacher comes in and is all like, hey, kid, get out of there. Get out of there or I'll break down the door. So he comes out and he does not remember what happens, but he's told afterwards that he almost choked her to death. Right. Uh, there's also this whole there thing where he keeps... 
there's also imagine like being a- in the bathroom as a child, right? And the teacher's like, "Come out! It's, it's come out, yeah. or I'll like you know." Especially since it's can you not go to the bathroom? Can you not be in the bathroom? Yeah, especially a female teacher. Like that's like let children go to the bathroom. Let children be in the bathroom. I would low key understand Stone Mountain because it is more secure place than this place. But this place is basically just a home for a bunch of children. And you just break into a public bathroom for male public bathroom and start yelling at this kid for being in the bathroom for too long. It's a little My God, what if he was taking a shit? Like, I know, right? Um, so, uh, basically, uh, there's also, like, this whole thing, the whole time he was there, he kept on trying to break out. He did a few times, but the police caught him. Um, and it's clear he was trying to go to New Jersey, because that's the last place he knew Madeline was in. Right? Um, trying to find his daughter. Uh, so, they, uh, they sent him to Stone Mountain. He tries to escape. There's razor wire. He, his foot gets caught, um, and there's, like, a giant ragged scar from underneath his arm all the way down to his knee on his side. Um, and whatnot from it. <clears throat> it is heavily mentioned that he is bullied a lot and abused. He never really talks, uh, even when people beat him up. And then more dot dot dot. That's, I could pull up the exact sentence. I don't want to, but that's basically how it's described. Um, that mixed with the way that he's never, like, lets anyone behind him. And doesn't, like, people touch him. It, it's that's a heavily insinuated essay um the question so, is was it other children was it I think a random so the way, adult i think the way it was described it was like the bullying went up to that and the or the beat ups yeah. people punching him a lot went up to that and the people punching him were other children so i think it was the other children and then they would keep on sending him to the medical center and then the medical center were like okay I'm to go back to that place. Like, hello, someone get him out. The social services woman does get him out. <laughs> um, because she's all like, hey, this is not a safe place for you. Oh my fucking god. Uh, I will contact the best people, um, best foster parents I have met. Um, they have not fostered a child in like 12 years. Uh, and those people are Jack's mom parents. Um, and so that's how we ended up there. Cool times. Yay. Um, yeah, we love it so much. Uh, one day they go to school. Uh, Mr. P teacher is at a conference of some kind, so there's a substitute, right? Um, and one of the kids who told Jack that the bullies want to beat up Joseph, uh, has Joseph help him, or has Jack help him roll up the mats? And so the uh, substitute's like, oh, thanks for helping me without, uh, me asking. And Jack's like, oh, you want me to get away from the change room because you know that they're going to be the Joseph now, right? So he goes in um, and Joseph, when he warned Joseph, Joseph is like, yeah, I went to Stone Mountain. I know how to handle this. If you punch one of them in the, like, they give you a good punch and then if you punch one of them in the nose, it'll break their nose and it will gush blood and then they'll all freak out. So, like, there's one of the kids is punched in the nose and freaking out on the ground but the other two are literally just constantly slamming him into the lockers to the point where, like, his back is literally gushing blood and everyone else is just watching this happen. How is it so I don't understand why they like this. hate this. Like, why are they so mad at Joseph? What did Joseph do to them besides exist? I mean, he got angry at the head one because uh, he starts saying shit about Madeline. Yeah, you but know? what did Joseph do to these children? Nothing. They're children. Exactly. They're bitches. Um, so, I don't understand how the substitute teacher does not hear that because lockers are fucking loud. Hello? Yeah. Like, um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Jack walks in, sees this, and so he, I think, uh, kicks one of them in the dick or something, I don't know, uh, one of them gets kneed in the crotch, um, and he, uh, pounces on people, um, and so Joseph can, uh, get away enough to punch them back, um, and then that's when someone else goes to the substitute teacher and is like, hey, there's a fight happening! fucking people um the vice principal comes uh basically jack and baby joseph are forced to sit with the uh vice principal while the three main three are forced to sit with the actual principal we do not hear much about the actual principal but the actual principal hear me out suspends all four of them the three bullies and joseph for four days um 
the vice principal tells Jack, you could have gone suspended. How dare you? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, you should have just walked away. You should have gone to teacher. And Jack's response is, what would you do if you saw a guy getting beat up? Would you take the time to go get a teacher or would you stay and help him? Um, and he's all like, he doesn't reply. Um, that is appropriate. Like, but basically the actual principal, uh, suspends the four of them for four days. Uh, and then tells the three bullies that if they try anything with Joseph ever again, they will be immediately expelled. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank God. Which really suck because the way it's described, there's not another school. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's. Like, this whole thing where, like, uh, yeah, like, obviously the PE teacher knew that something like this was going to happen, and no one, like, cared uh, enough to actually do anything about it until after it already happened. But now that it's happened, proper punishment is done. We like that. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, Joseph and Jack go home um, afterwards. Uh, the three bullies are, so, like, the whole thing is that after suspension, uh, suspension is right before Christmas break, right? And then after suspension, uh, they have to make up all their homework and classes. So it's like a shit ton of work, including PE class, right? Um, but the his teachers, <laughs> uh, the math teacher comes and gets him all the math homework every day. Uh, so he's caught up. The English teacher does the same. And the gym teacher does the same. So he doesn't have to catch up at all. We love that. Um, and yeah. so when they return home, uh, Jack's mom is all like, okay, what the hell, guys? What the hell? Um, and his dad's like, what the hell were you thinking, Jack? Stepping in like that. You could have gotten hurt. You could have gotten in trouble. Uh, you should have gone to a, got a teacher, all this stuff. And he's all like, he says it again. What would you do if you saw someone being beat up by three guys? Would you have just left to get a teacher? Or would you have actually helped out? And his dad's like, you know what? I would have done the same thing. <laughs> Valid. So that he doesn't get in trouble. And they do, like, yell at Joseph um, for, like, getting in trouble. But they, like, understand that, like, why and what I, like, it wasn't his fault type thing. Right? We love them about that. We love that about them. There we go. I can't speak words anymore. Um, So that's happening. Uh, there's this thing where Joseph's father gets a very good lawyer, and by very good, annoying lawyer, to basically um make it so he can visit at one point. Um, and he pulls Joseph aside. He wants to leave the house with Joseph and the social services lady has to be there as well, right? Uh, and she's all like, no, you cannot leave the house with him. No, no, no. So they go to the living room uh, and he finds again, what do you think it's like you to know, not be able to talk to your own child? What if I take your child away? Blah, 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 blah. You know. I don't know things. why no one intervened more with Joseph's father because you can tell that his father is unstable. Yeah. And they could have done more if they wanted to to keep him away. Yeah. Um. There's also like this whole thing where at this point, I think they have officially said that they're gonna help him find Jupiter, right? Uh. And so when that happens, uh, I think it's also already been Christmas and they got him things or something like that and books and whatnot. So like he hugged them, uh, which was a big deal. And also Jack Sad put his hand on Joseph's back and he didn't flinch. Mm -hmm. But when Joseph's dad does it to put him into the like guide him to the living room, he flinches and it's just like. <laughs> don't um, be like this. Oh. It's fine. It's fine. We don't need to talk about it. Um. Right. Uh. So basically, he's all threatening again. Uh. And we learned why. Uh. Jupiter is still in foster care, despite the fact that like she's a baby, she would have pretty easily gone adopted and whatnot. Is because Joseph's father and his lawyer are making it so they are causing a bunch of like red tape. So that she can't get adopted. Because he's all like, I want her for myself. But actually, he's basically trying to sell her. He will sign the papers if Madeline's family give him a shit ton of money. Yay! <laughs> um, Joseph is not happy about this, right? Uh, and he learns somehow that she is in Brunswick. Which is very near where I lived in Maine. When I was a child. Like, I literally pulled it up on a map and I showed it to the fish and I was like, this is how close it was. And it was weirdly close. So, yeah, that's a fun fact for you. Well, is Maine a big state? Yes. Okay. It's so the big, it really biggest of the New England states. It's pretty big. Um, yeah, no. There's Not like as big as Texas. I know, right? <laughs> um, 
there, there's like this whole scene in the Brunswick Library, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's like been in the Brunswick Library, like <laughs> type thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, that also that stuff's happening. Uh, they have a good Christmas. Things are good. They're having a good time. There's like a lot of snowball throwing and having fun, um, and whatnot. Uh, but also he's constantly stressed about learning where Jupiter is, wanting to get see Jupiter all this stuff uh so he eventually runs away to find her walks in a snowstorm basically and so um Jack and his dad go searching uh during like drive around to try to find him before he gets because like it's a snowstorm right uh before he can get far uh they call the police almost instantly right um and the social services lady uh and the vice principal shows up while they're gone and it's all like hey you should have known this was gonna happen. You know, bad kids, fucking all the stuff, saying all this bad shit about Joseph. Up um, and after the fact, when she tells the story, she's like, "I almost hit him with my pan right then and there." Um, and Jack is all oh, like, yeah. "We look, we learned from Jack's point of view that like she probably would have because she got arrested eight times for protesting um violence against others." Hell yeah. <laughs> She's an icon. I fucking love her. Okay? There's also this whole scene uh, before he decides to run away and find Jupiter where he eats uh, Jack's mother's pe- canned peaches. Mm-hmm. Um, Don't you love yeah. when parents are actually good people? Yep. Yeah. Um, so, like, it's, like, a day or two later. Um, the police are like, yeah, we can't find them. Um, and the social services... So they didn't like, look. I don't, I don't believe they looked. Yeah, there's, like, hints that they didn't look. Um... There's, uh, the social services lady one time when they call, it's all like, listen, technically, uh, you guys have gone too close. Like, you, you, you don't realize how bad this kid is, um, and, like, you've gone too close, Which so maybe you should- for a second. Mm-hmm. Because, like, the way this is going, if the ending wasn't the ending, I believe that they would have adopted him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That like, what do you, another thing I how do you up. not care about a child that you're going to potentially adopt? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's hints at that because the time when Joseph's father, do, the, the, the father uh, shows up because of the lawyer stuff, um, shows up and whatnot, uh, he, like, tried to tell Joseph that they don't care about him because he's all like, you're just a paycheck to them. And Jack's father is like, okay, yes, here's the paperwork. Yes, we are being paid to house you by the state. Here's this money. You see whose name is on the bank account that this goes to? Yours. Because it is your college fund. We are saving money so that you ha- can have a future. And his dad is like, ha, 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 my kid can't have a future, blah, 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 blah. I will take back my son, and then he can have a future without having to go to college, blah, 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 blah. No, Bessie, I just have thought. Uh-huh. What if they kept that money? I assume they did. I assume they did, yeah. You put it. Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm that's what i assume happened yeah um so uh they so yeah uh basically she the mother called up the social services lady to be like hey should we go out searching ourselves and she's like hey maybe you're getting too close maybe you should stop um like this isn't a good idea and so the mother like as this lady is trying to explain hey you're too close to this child you have taken in uh and has no one else stop it uh the mother's like thanks for your help and hangs up on her a fucking icon um and then uh then she's like okay we're gonna go find him <laughs> so they drive out um most of the way they do find a church uh they're like stopping at any place that he could have stayed at like a bar a restaurant diner um churches they stop at this church um and the priest is like yeah i found him sleeping here i gave him food uh and as soon as i went to like call his parents which was a fake number um he ran away and they're like did you call the police and he's like yeah and they're like well they said they had no information he's like well i told them which hints at the whole thing that Fish said, where the police aren't actually trying. Um, yeah. Uh, so they end up in this town in Brunswick. Town in Brunswick? Brunswick is a town. They end up in this neighborhood in Brunswick. Right? Random neighborhood. Uh, and they're like, okay, we're gonna split up and we're gonna go our separate ways to try to find him. Right? Um, and Jack is walking and he's like, he would not go into like, establishments he would go around the neighborhood and just randomly ask people if they knew where jupiter was until he found it right um so he's just walking around but he gets really cold so he goes into the library and he uh is like showing pictures 
of Joseph to people. And the, he instantly realizes that one of the librarians he's talking to is actually Jupiter's foster mom. And then almost immediately, um, she's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm the guy who has his back, right? Um, puppy? <laughs> Come here. I have puppy. Bella dog in a sweater. Bella dog in a sweater? I want to And I have an IV. And I want to see. Can I see? I can take photos for you. Can you guess? I got to wait. Because I can't open it on the other phone. I'm sorry. You can see it afterwards. If you want, you can take a break for five seconds and look at it right now. Well, let's just play this question. Okay. okay. Um, so, you want me to take... Okay, well, she moved. I can't take another one. Bella. Oh, my God! <laughs> no! Get away! Oh, my God! There's crazy dogs. Riley, why is your sweater like that? Put up on your shoulders. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so um, they she he's like, okay, well, can like you at least tell Jupiter that like Jack loves him and whatnot? He tries to get her to agree to or Jack Joseph to that Joseph Perfect. loves her. Um, and he tries to get her to like agree to let Joseph to. Uh, see her and whatnot. Um, but it doesn't really work out. Um, she's like, no. And then almost immediately, her I assume husband um calls her and he's all like, hey, there's this weird kid outside walking around. And she's like, uh, that's Jupiter's bio dad. We'll be there in a minute. Uh, so she takes Jack and she's like, okay, so he's like, you can't leave the car, but I'm gonna deal with it. And the police almost immediately show up right after she does. Um, and the police are like instantly trying to grab Joseph, and he. Obviously, he's freaking out about it. Um, and so they try to grab her more. Uh, one of them comes up behind him, all this stuff. Uh, and she immediately uh, sees where the situation is going and stops it, right? Um, and she's all like, hey, no, 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 no. Um, I, like, Jack can't hear what she's saying, but she goes in and gets a newer photo of Jupiter for him, and he's very happy. Um, and then she drives them both to the spot where uh, they're supposed to meet up with Jack's parents, right? Um, and she tells them that she will write him a letter every day about Jupiter and tell her about him. And she does. She sends some new photos of her. It's just really sweet, okay? Like, um, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's happening. Uh, things are good after that. He uh, is no longer in the fifth period office duty because the math teacher is making him part of the math leaps and whatnot so he's like teaching him trigonometry now right um PE teacher is making it so he uh helps him train the uh track team and whatnot right um and he's like doing a really good job uh he's hanging out with the language arts teacher more like he's actually making a community here and then and then one day they're walking home uh there's like also this thing where uh the bus driver's, like, being really mean to them again. Um, and so they Why decide to... Why can't these adults be normal? I know, right? Um, so, like, they ask if they can start walking to school again, because, like, it's not as cold anymore. And Jack's dad is like, okay, I understand why. Yes. Right? Um, so, uh, they are walking home one day, and they see a new white car or truck in the front drive. And Joseph is like, <laughs> I know, right? Joseph instantly understands. And so he tells Jack to go hang out in the barn while he handles it. And he goes, Jack's hanging out in there for like a good long time uh, before he decides, you know what? I'm going inside my own house to see what's happening. And he finds um, Joseph cry yelling at his dad saying that he sold her basically hinting that um, he sold, he signed the paperwork. I feel I like there was a way for this to not happen like this to go off, I guess. <laughs> I know, right? Um, he uh, finally sold the paperwork or signed the paperwork after Madeline's family gave him a shit ton of money and he used that money to buy a new truck, basically selling his own granddaughter for a nice new truck. And uh, Joseph is literally cry sobbing on the ground um, and whatnot. And he's all like, are you done yet? Like, stop freaking out. 
um, Jack comes in, and he pulls Jack against him, and he has a gun pointed at Jack, and he smells like alcohol, right? Um, everyone's freaking out. Um, Joseph is like, listen, Dad, I'll come with you. Just let him go. All this stuff. Um, and he tries to go for him, and I think it's Jack's mom who, like, grabs onto, her, onto him to make it so he can't go to him and whatnot. Um, and he's like, how about this? Because, like, Jack's dad is, like, being very calm uh, throughout all this. And he's like, hey, hey, like, what do you think's gonna happen? You can't get very far. Maybe you'll get out of the city or out of the town. But you won't get past state lines. Like, because they're in northern Maine, um, you won't get past state lines. Like, as soon as, like, you're out of here, you know I'm gonna call the police. Like, what do you think's gonna happen? Kidnapping a child is not a good idea. Um, and whatnot. And he's like, okay, then how about I take both the kids? Um, which, like, is not a trade at all, my dude. Um, and then what are they going to do? Blah, 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 blah. Basically, um, until Joseph, uh, gets away and he's like, okay, I'll come with you. Let's go. Takes his dad outside. And they get in the car and his dad's like driving really fast because like he knows as soon as possible, uh, they're going to call the police. That's like the first thing that Jack's dad does. He calls the police. So he's speeded and he's also drunk and he's coming the other way is the vice principal and the vice principal hits his brakes. Uh, but he slams directly into the side of him. Tipping him over, he hits, um, a tree, uh, when- so he doesn't, like, flip over a bunch, uh, and he's basically fine. Um, and it's right yeah, in front of the church. I have just ended there. I know, right? Um, I forgot, like, all the stuff where he goes to church for the first time, uh, for Christmas Day, or was it Eve? Oh my god, um, yeah. And he's, like, talking to- he- the, the, the whole entire story about Mary and Jesus, um, is very important to him, and he talks to the priest afterwards, and he's all like, hey- what are your thoughts on, like, angels? And he's all like, angels are there when we need them. And he's like, okay, then where the hell have they been? Um, is what he says. It's important for after the scene. So, um, he, he, when he hits the vice principal, is right outside the church. So he swerves, um, and goes over this bridge that is, uh, has a sign that says bridge out. It is a rotted bridge. Um, it is over the lake. They almost immediately fall through. It takes them days to find the car. Jack's dad is the one that pulls him out. I'm fine. Moment of silence for my child. My poor baby. I just, I, why? <laughs> why? What the fuck? I know, right? Like, why would he do that? Okay, so there's a funeral. Um, the only people who show up are vice principal. <laughs> like, after the kid dies is when you care about him. Shut the fuck up, vice principal. Um, right? Um, the math teacher, the language arts teacher, and the PU teacher. Jack and his parents. And I think it was the three kids on the bus who were, like, kind of friends with Jack. I don't think it was three bullies. Right. I don't know. <laughs> um. So, at the funeral service, the priest does, like, this whole, you know, priestly thing. And then afterwards, he's like, where the hell were the angels? You know, normal things. I'm so normal. I'm fine, and I'm normal, and I'm fine. Are you crying, too? I'm sweating I'm so crying. much because I'm so emotional. I feel like we should reiterate the fact that, uh, Mr. Gary D. Schmidt, we are in your wall. Your wall. <laughs> yeah, bitch, how dare you? It gets even sadder, too. Like, the fuck? The fuck? Right? Um, Jack cries at the funeral. Right. Um, and then on Joseph's 16th birthday, they have officially adopted Jupiter. Don't speak to me. <laughs> and when she meets Jack, she calls him Jackie. It's fine. How dare that bitch do this to us? Um, I do assume, to answer your question earlier, that the uh, money they got from the state for fostering Joseph uh, 
they and they put aside for him i assume they do save it for her uh and whatnot for her future my thought is um the way joseph tried to be a better father than my own father could ever be that's the thought I'm just going to give him a Kit Kat. This poor child. I would do anything for that poor child. I would I would have taken away hit him away from the entire world until until he was okay and then I would have we would have done some something so drastic to his father and it would have been okay. You know? Oh yeah, no literally the way I was like I'm going to beat up Joseph's dad. I'm going to beat bash his knees in. Like, all this stuff, and you didn't even tell me what happens, you bitch! You wanted me to spoil the biggest thing. Why would I do that? How dare you! Yeah, it's sad. Five stars. Mm-hmm. How dare this man? I, like, it was like punch in the face, punch in the face, after punch in the face of this book. Yeah. Also, I forgot to bring up, this is our 50th episode. It was going to be the coldest touch, but, well. This happened instead. Look at us. Uh, you got anything else to say about this book? Ow. (laughs) Accurate. You wanna, you wanna say anything else, bestie? No. 